This user interface is going to take a name from the user and after they click submit, it'll display hello and their name below. I'm starting with two Java files. One of them is my hello frame and my second one is my jhello frame. And my public static void main is inside hello frame. And I'm going to create my panel in the jhello frame and then I will attach the panel to the frame inside the main class and we'll display it. So to begin, I'm going to start over here in my jhello frame. Notice there's nothing in it at this time. I'm going to have it extend the J frame so that I can use the classes and the methods associated with the J frame class. I'll have to import that to use it. After I do that, I'm going to create a constructor for the J hello frame. And I'm going to create some objects to go inside of the J hello frame. For my specific pieces of, for my project, I need a text or a label for the instructions. I need a text field to hold the name that the user submits. I need a button and I also need a label to hold the results. So I'm going to create those sides out, those components outside of the constructor so that I can use them inside my click listener class too, which we'll implement once the user clicks submit and we'll use the uh, click listener to get the information out of the text box and put it into the field. So I'm going to create those as global variables outside of my constructor. For the label, the text field, and the button, I have to import classes to use with those, so do those as you create them. You saw that I had to import each of the uh, packages to use them. Uh, with the J text field, I set how long that I want the, the text field to be, uh, and you, it'll accept any integer. So if you want it to be seven, approximately seven characters long, uh, you can put that in here. I've chosen 15. Right now it says all these items haven't been used yet, so we're going to use them now. Now inside, whenever I create these J labels and these buttons, I can have the text sit automatically. So um, I can, inside these parentheses, I can put in two double quotes and I can have in there what I want them to say. But I also want you to see that you can do that inside of the JFrame since these are global variables. We can access them and set the text inside of the constructor or inside of other fields or methods. For now, so you can see it in action, and so we can start seeing the user interface component, I'm going to create a new J panel, and I'm going to add the instructions, the name, the submit, and the results to the J panel, and then we'll add the panel. Use the method add to put the, uh, to tell which panel we're adding it to, and then I uh, put in the co component that I'm adding into the panel and it's just going to add those components in the order that I place them in. Right now I'm not using a layout manager. A layout manager would allow us to control where these components ended up. And that's more that's inside our, our advanced topics if you're interested in looking at layout buttons. For now this is just going to be a flow layout. It's just going to keep putting one right after another. Here I'm going to add the panel to the frame and I'm going to set the size for the panel. Right now, if I run this, nothing's going to happen because my main class is still empty. So I'm going to flip over to my main class and I'm going to create a new J frame and then add the panel that we just created to it. So here's my new frame called J hello frame and it uses the components from the constructor to create that J hello frame and I need to do a couple settings on this in order for it to display the first one is to set the default close operation and the finally the last component is to make the frame visible 
So now if I run this, here's my label, my text field, my button, and my last label actually isn't displaying yet. I haven't set any text to display yet. Right now, nothing works. So if I click the submit button, nothing happens. So we'll have to do add a click listener uh, to listen for that submit button. Let's add a click listener now. So back over my J Hello frame, I'm going to go outside of my constructor, which ends here, and I'm going to create an inner class called click listener. And it's going to implement an interface called action listener. And when I implement this interface, I have to do two things. First of all, I have to import the action listener. And secondly, secondly, I have to add the unimplemented methods. So right away, I, after I do this, I can see that my program is good to go. It'll run. And just to give you a hint of what's going to happen, I'm just going to system.out.print to the console button click. So you can see what happens whenever that button is clicked. So let me run the program again. And now down here in my console, if you look, whenever I click my button, oh no, it doesn't work yet. And that's because I forgot a very important component. I need to add the click listener for the button. So right now there is a click listener out there, but it's not doing anything. It's just, uh, it's not attached to any button. So I need to add that to the button in order for my click listener to work. Very easy to do. Inside my JFrame constructor, I'm going to uh, add a click listener and I'm going to call it L and I'm going to make that a new click listener. And then I'm going to add an action item, an action listener to the submit button. And I just fill in L. It actually automatically did it for me. If I had more than one click listener, so let's say I had more than one button, I might have click listener uh, or submit click listener and cancel click listener or clear click listener. I would add the respective click listener to the specific button I wanted it to use. So obviously if I had a clear button, I wouldn't want it to do the same activity as my submit button. So I would create a second click listener with a different name that I could implement on a, on a clear button. So now our click listener should work. I'll go ahead, uh, pull it up and let me bring it down here. You can take a look at it. You can see the button click, button clicked every time I click that button. So now something is listening for that button to be clicked. Let's go and implement a more useful method inside of the action perform. So what I want it to do is grab the name out of the text box and then append hello to it and then set the results to the new text string that it just created. So I can do this just like I would if I was just using the console. I'm going to use name.getText and that's going to get the text out of the box that's there and into a string. Now that whenever text comes out of a text field, it comes out as a string. So you may have to, if you're trying to work with a number or um, an integer or a double, you'll have to parse that into an integer or a double or cast it into an integer or a double. I'm going to take the temp name and I'm going to add, append hello to the beginning of it. And then I'm going to set results to be the new text string. If you recall, we had several times where we took the name out of the screen, out of the uh, console window, and we took the first letter to capitalization. You can do that all here inside of this, just as you um, you would have if you were working in the console too. So let's go ahead and let's run this guy, and we'll type in our name. Submit, and there's our text. So this very simple program, inside of our main class, we just created a new J frame based off of our J Hello frame class, and we set it to be visible, and we set a default close operation. So not a lot going on inside of our main class. Instead, all the work is happening inside of our J Hello frame class. We created buttons. We created a constructor 
so that whenever a new J Hello Frame was made, we set the instructions, we set the submit button, we added a click listener, we created a J panel, and we added those components to the J panel. And then finally, we uh, give the command to add the panel to the frame, and then we set the size for it. And down here, we have a click listener class where we, uh, this one is for the submit button, where we add, grab the text name whenever the button is clicked, uh, create a new string, and then we put the new string back into the results tab. Let me show you really quickly how we could add a clear button. So I've already added the clear button to the J panel. It'll display next to results. I'll go ahead and run that and show you that. So right now there's nothing there. And right click submit. It puts the new text in here and then I have a clear button. Doesn't do anything yet. So let's create a click listener for the clear button. I'm gonna make sure I was in the correct area to do that. I'm gonna call this clear click listener. Implements action listener. I've already imported the class. Gotta spell your keywords correctly. But I need to add the unimplemented methods. Same method. Let's have this particular button um, take what's inside of um, the name field and let's set it to be a blank st string. And let's take the result string and let's have it set to a blank field as well. Now I need to add the click listener for the clear button. So I'll do that before I create my J panel. There we go. So I've got my new clear click listener. Now whenever I run this and I type somebody's name in, and I click the clear button, it clears the text out of the, sub, out of the text field and out of the label. So you can have multiple click listeners. If I added more buttons and I wanted them to do different things whenever I clicked on them, I'm just going to create different classes and each of my classes will have to have a different name. So I could have used submit click listener, clear click listener, and typically you do use the name of the button as part of the click listener if you have more than one of them. But they all implement this action listener interface and whenever I implement implement the action listener I have to also implement the required methods in this case their action performed methods and whatever happens whatever I want to happen whenever that action is performed I place that inside of that method so this is just a brief overview if you have any questions or any issues getting this implemented please let me know